Welcome to the Liam Senior Show. I know, right? Not another podcast. But here we are. Join this beer brewing, filmmaking, YouTubing northerner as he catches up with friends, interviews interesting people, and shares opinions no one asked for. So humor Liam in this self-indulgent journey into podcasting. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Hold on to your butts. James Kennedy, how the hell are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's been uh, it's been far too long. Although we did bump into each other briefly at the, whatever that bar was called in Northwich. We were both drunk, I think. Uh, that doesn't sound like me. Uh, no, 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 no. I've never touched a drop of alcohol in my life. No, no. I mean, no, no. That doesn't doesn't sound like you. No. <laughs> Maybe I think of someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably, probably. To be fair, probably. to be fair, there's been. I think we've, there's probably been more attempts at. Um, we see each other drunk more than we see each other sober. So. Yeah, I think we've forgotten how many times we've seen each other because of alcohol. <laughs> so it's like we probably saw each other quite recently, just just totally forgot. <laughs> it's been it's been hard to try and uh, to try and get this pinned down and organize it because we're we're both busy in 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 different parts. Um, I've, I'm obviously 150 miles away from where you normally reside, but uh, we've had to resort to Zoom because you're currently in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been here for a yeah. week, here for another week. So, so you didn't have to go to that length to 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 get out of this. I thought you <laughs> lived in Canada, so I flew out specifically for this. I was very surprised when, yeah. I, when I turned up to the airport and they, nobody had heard of me. <laughs> no, no. No, no one, no one's heard of me. None of the Canadians have ever heard of Liam Senior or his, no. his podcast. It surprises me. <laughs> and I doubt they ever will, in, in all honesty. Um, I think I've said a lot. I would like to be in Canada. I would love to live in Canada. I think that's, it's, I've never been. It's on the bucket list. I Vancouver in particular. Statue. I don't think they'd have you here. Yeah. I suppose not. It's, I mean, I, I, I did, someone did send me a picture of a poster of myself. Uh, as you walk through, which I naturally thought was an advert for the Liam Senior show, but turns out was oh, the a airport? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was more of a don't let this guy in kind of thing than a than an advert. It was a picture of the of um, of like a poo emoji. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the uh, the national. That's the flag. Is the poo emoji? I thought it was the national national uh, national animal. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mistake. the uh, the wild poo emoji. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make make something out of this. It's not it's not working. What the hell are you doing in Vancouver, James Kennedy? <laughs> what am I doing here? Yeah. Um. Basically, I was filming over in the states, and then I've just come up here to do a bit of post on it, um, and just hang out with friends. But uh, yeah, so we're just sort of there's a good community here of uh, filmmakers in Vancouver. Obviously, a lot of the television shows over the years have been made here because of the tax breaks and things like that. You know, these yeah. the X Files here. If you're familiar with any of the uh, CW superhero shows, like you know, the Supergirls and the whatever yeah. Batwoman or whatever um Arrow. They yes. shoot a lot of them mm-hmm. here. So if you're walking down the street yeah. you might bump into a superhero or two. Um, and there's and now there's one more. And now there's one more. Yeah. Thanks Ollie. There you go. You scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was actually um, yeah, so um, here to sort of wrap up basically a project that I've just been working on. And I've got a friend up here who's, um, who's just had a baby. So it just worked out nicely. To- Muzzle tough. Muzzle tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was, I was, uh, I was watching that, um, Ryan Reynolds meets, uh, that American track show host guy. I forget his name. I should know. David Letterman. Uh, yeah. he was talking about, he, he started his career on X files. It's like his big break, which was in Vancouver. And then he sacked it off to, to go to LA and they were like, Oh, you'll regret it. And, um, I mean, he's married to Blake Lively, so uh, I think things have turned out okay. Well, I mean, it, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, there's a, people around here love Ryan Reynolds. He's like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, he's, he's the equivalent of, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like a great Manchester example. I was going to say Morrissey, but I don't think he's a very good example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think any British example is going to be chalk and cheese, going to be Marmite, isn't it, for, for a lot of people? Whereas in Canada, I think everyone is just all in on loving Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the alternative is Nickelback, and I don't think anyone's in a in a yeah to get um yeah to get Look to love this him. photograph. But, um, yeah. yeah, he's pretty uh, he's pretty famous around here. I think they gave him like the key to the city or some kind of award just for being right like um, a national treasure for Canada. So I think he strikes me as the type of person who's probably going to lose that. 
So <laughs> uh, I'm surprised you were able to get in. To be fair, if he's the one responsible for getting an entry. <laughs> oh, right, so right, he's fine. He's made millions and millions of dollars of being the same person in every film, with a different yeah. name, character. But, yeah. yeah, I think he he, uh, he he doubled in a few different roles, didn't he? And then found what he was good at. Found he was just generally hilarious, and then became yeah. Deadpool and everything. <laughs> he's really good in like there's a movie called buried where he's buried alive and uh yes the whole movie and he's, he's mm -hmm. brilliant in that and yeah it's like adam sandler like you watch adam sandler's mm -hmm. movies and it's all you know cool and fart jokes and things like that and then <laughs> when he does things like uncut gems you're like god just do this like yeah <laughs> just, like, messing around with the other stuff like yeah better. he's just done a new one hasn't he uh is that the is that the one you're on about the basketball hustle yeah Hustle, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, I know what you mean. He's yeah, I think there's, there's there's definitely a few typecast sort of actors that do get kind of bottlenecked into it. I think you think of like Vin Diesel and The Rock, like they're never gonna do actually no, that's having said that, they he's done quite a few The Rock's done quite a few like rom coms and, and laugh laugh out laugh out loud type ones now instead of just being the muscle man. Well, yeah, I mean he started off small but he was doing the tooth fairy, wasn't he? So, uh... <laughs> Best film ever. Which I don't think he's listed down his IMDb. I don't know why he's taken that. Oh, is he not? Oh. He won all I didn't the could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Class. So how did you shoot going California? Eh? Yeah, it was good. Um, it was tiring. We, we, mm -hmm. it, it was just a lot to fit in the time that we had. Um, but having never sort of done anything over there and, you know, yeah. just sort of reliant on crew that you've never worked with and a lot of what i do it's it's a community-based industry so it's yeah you know, it's word of mouth and things like that and you you know you're reliant on sort of good people otherwise it can really sort of um hamstring your projects but uh everyone was really nice everyone was really welcoming and cool. uh yeah it was just it was just beautiful weather down there and you know um we were shooting on uh skid row <laughs> bless you which is, the, which is uh yeah it's exactly everything that it sounds like um <laughs> so it's, it's, i don't know you sort of step out you step out the studio and there's just people lying on the street in their own circle and you just go oh my god what is going on um yeah but the city just doesn't seem to want to help these people so it's just like a real it's like a just a deposit right. in the area where they just let people be do whatever they want and um then you turn a corner and it's gentrified you know you've got like the arts district there um which is like the manchester <laughs> northern Corps, i suppose is an equivalent yeah. but it's you know it's literally like butted up against just an area where just, right. you don't you know when you go in you don't come back out again it's weird like the city yeah. just doesn't want to do anything about that but um sort of absorbs people yeah yeah choose them up a little bit which is it's not very nice but um no. yeah so we were shooting there we were shooting in we went into the cnn building which is kind of cool Nice. The lobby is just full of like Anchorman characters. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up shooting in the room that the the Asian network uh, <laughs> they operate their news station out of, uh, which is, yeah, it was just funny. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> exactly what LA. You know, everything you think about LA is exactly that. Like it's just yeah. You know, you, you go into a building and they're shooting a movie in there. It's pretty crazy. But, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. To, to the the people that live there. Californians, I imagine the you know, when you walked in somewhere and saw them filming a movie, you're like, oh, cool! I wonder what gear they're using. I wonder who it is, and they're just like, oh, I'm trying to buy a cup of coffee or I'm trying yeah, to deposit walking, a check or something. Into a, onto a movie set for us is amazing, but then they're, they're, for them it's just like walking into a Weatherspoon. <laughs> I mean, that sounds great. So <laughs> it's, more of, it's more of an annoying for them, I think, especially yeah. around here in Vancouver, <laughs> like. I need to get there, but there's a there's a film shooting on that street, so now I've got to go all the way around. Oh. I think they just, I think it's a bit something they have to tolerate. But um, yeah, comes to the territory, I guess, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean the thing with the LA is, I think people are slightly. It seemed like they were slightly fed up of of uh, a lot of things, traffic and crime and things like that. One <laughs> of the, one of the actors on our shoot, uh, she had to get like a a scooter, like a like a rentable scooter to set. Uh, on the first day because her car was locked in a crime scene. So, ah, okay. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. So apparently that's more of an everyday occurrence there. So. They weren't shooting CSI. It was like an actual crime scene. Actual crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> genuine. <laughs> genuine well, I feel scene. like in Hollywood, they probably would turn up with cameras. I was, I was listening. I heard this story <laughs> about these guys that they were shooting a film on a street and um, these sort of chances sort of clocked what was happening 
went home and got a lawnmower and would just turn up to people's houses <laughs> going, can I mow your lawn for free? And people were going, okay, well, right. <laughs> but, so they were just mowing lawns around this movie set. All right. <laughs> and because of the, no- of the noise, eventually yeah. the crew had to go and be like, how much will it cost for you to stop doing this? <laughs> it's, it's like astronomical fee. One million like, yeah, dollars. Pay it. <laughs> These guys made so much money just for mowing lawns. <laughs> That's quite entrepreneurial of them, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it is, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I thought at first you meant it was like, oh, it was going to be in the shot and everyone's like gardens were overgrown. So they thought, we'll just offer to tidy everything up so it looks nice on <laughs> on the, yeah, on screen. But no, just, just. Uh, um, almost sinister. Yeah. It's been a bit of a shit house. <laughs> <laughs> Don't well out of it. Yeah. No, I was going to say, how did you, you obviously did well out of it. So. <laughs> That's how I got my start in the movie industry. <laughs> yeah. yeah what would it take to make you stop hire me oh okay <laughs> I could, that could be a film in itself yeah, yeah, yeah. the lawnmower boy the lawnmower yeah. man yeah <laughs> so are you, are you allowed to discuss the project you've been been shooting at the, this this time you've been over there or is it all nda or all not really yeah so it's we're not allowed to it's a it's a video game of all things but uh, oh, cool. not in a video game sense that you're normally used to it's like right. a new type of media uh, that these okay. guys sort of approach me about uh, oh cool but, we're sort of halfway through it, so I've got to come back out in a few months and, and shoot the ending because we've got to build some sets and like a water yeah. tank and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I think it's out sort of the start of next year, so it's quite a quick um, turnaround. Oh, you'll have to have to send it our way, and we can uh, can share it when it's done. Yeah, that's just to get I mean, those it's, get it's those really, views up for you. <laughs> yeah, it's something I've never done before, so I was really interested to do. I mean. It all came about because the guy had seen like a film that I'd made, and mm-hmm. so a lot of what I do is, is short films as well. And, and yeah. some of these, you know, they cost a lot of money. Short films, but you never actually get a return on them. Like it's not like you could sell a short film yeah. to like a channel and, and make your money back on that. It's it's yeah. a lot of um, it's more of a really expensive business card, um, right? It kind of sort of proves what you can do, and you can use yeah. that to sort of get jobs. And certainly when I made the. It, the film was called Control Z that I made, and when I made it, everyone mm-hmm. thought it was crazy for sort of putting money into something that I'll never get back. But yeah, over time, you see that it actually comes back to you, and the energy that you've put in there is kind of yeah. nice to see it come back. So yeah, this project was all about that, um, yeah. and uh, and it's great to see it paying off. You know, it's um, it was interesting, Sorry. and yeah, and it was just like like I say, it's a video game. I've never written a video game before, so it was just a completely different experience. I think that's good though, isn't it? To, you don't want to be doing all the, the same thing all the time. It's good to be able to challenge yourself and mm. get your teeth into something that's um, that's going to uh, yeah keep you keep you interested. Yeah, I mean, um, variation is amazing. I I get very bored quite easily. Um, yeah. I, I don't like staying in the same place. Certainly, when I had jobs sort of coming up, like uh, I think two years was like the most I could ever do. Yeah. Um, you know, you get you get fed up quickly and you have to move on. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Going back to Control Z, um, mm. loved it. By the way, um, was very fortunate to uh, to to get a little sneak before, um, or as, as it was as it was released, and loved it. Um, very popular in Russia, I believe, as well. Huge in Russia. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think they could have, would probably some of them would quite like a, a, a Control Z option right about now. But uh, no, it did, yeah. Yeah, went down really well there. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of interesting when it did, did get sort of quite popular in Russia, and then. You get you, you feel really really powerful, and then you realise what kind of people are watching it. And, uh, yeah. Putin yeah. loves it. But Putin yeah, watches well, it every day before bed. Yeah. Shirtless on a horse home. with his laptop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like this, this one that the uh, Vladimir Putin's bathroom. He calls it the Putin. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Just, just nip into the Putin. You know. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of it strikes me as the kind of person that if someone else made that joke to him, they would be executed. Oh, yeah, straight away. Yeah, I mean, Steven and then, he, and then he'd go on to make the uh, the joke himself. But kill him. That's my joke now. <laughs> you see that video of Conor McGregor where he's getting a picture with Vladimir Putin. He puts his arm around him, and the Secret Service guy steps forward and kind of goes. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> that's power, not physical power, is it? When you <laughs> when, <laughs> the likes of Conor McGregor would uh, would take a step back. It's um. Says that. Drinking, drinking blue episode, it's nine. It's nine thirty in the morning here, and I'm drinking blue Gatorade. <laughs> Pizza rebel. Pizza rebel. Are you are you absorbing the uh, North American culture whilst you're over there? Um, yeah, kind of. 
I mean, Canada's a, they love poutine. Have you ever had that? It's like chips, cheese and gravy. I'm, I'm going to upset a few people that I'm not, I'm very selective with cheese dishes I like. Um, so I, I'm, right, we'll just, I'm just apprehensive. Reel, reel, some off, reel some off real quick. Let's see where we're standing with you. Well, so I love pizza. Right. I feel, I feel like there has to be like a really prominent other flavor that accompanies the cheese. If it's it like, you don't like cheese. I just, well, but I love pizza, so I can't really say I don't like cheese. I just, I like bland, tasteless cheese, I think, <laughs> Name, <laughs> namely mozzarella. <laughs> right, right. right. So, well, mozzarella, you have to say, yeah. it, have to say it properly. Oh, I've just done something already. What have I done? I'm using, I'm using a bit of tech here that uh, um, is just, it's just no on true. Just let me, we'll cut this bit out, maybe, unless it's, unless it's hilarious. Don't cut this bit. I'll, um, I'll do something last year, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Um, you might be able to help me actually remotely from all this way. Mm -hmm. I'm using a uh, uh, an Atmos Ninja Five, and it's supposed to just uninterrupt record, and occasionally just turns itself off. So, anyway, I've pressed record again. It's it's it's. I could press it now, and you couldn't see. It just means if you say something hilarious, I might miss that one <laughs> that <laughs> one bit when you're really funny, and then yeah, it's just been a waste. Been it's just been a waste. <laughs> but back to Putin, not Putin. Putin, uh, have you sampled any? Is it? Uh, is it? Uh, my, my understanding is it's basically chips, cheese curds, and gravy. Yeah, it's cheese curds, so it's like kind of like rubbery, sort of squeaky cheese. Um, okay, now we're talking. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, not overly really cheesy. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I've try mostly it. sampled the beer. There's a lot yeah. of brewer breweries around. I mean, this is probably a great time for what you're doing, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah it's, there's a lot of uh, amazing breweries. So I think we might be doing a brewery tour today. <laughs> nice. Which, do, you know, do you know which one it was? Which one it is? Which one? What? Do, you know, do you know what it's called? The brewery? Oh, there's loads. Absolutely mm. tons around here. You know, you, yeah. could, uh, you could spit beer out your mouth and land on a brewery. It's, there's there's <laughs> probably 15 or something that I think you could just do a little, bit of a pub crawl. But, oh, um, right. Okay. I thought you went, you were going to a brewery for a tour of the brewery. So which one was it? Oh, but no, you're actually no, you're doing a tour just, of, of tap rooms and brew houses and that kind of stuff. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, I'm, sort of, I'm kind of getting a bit sick of beer, but I'd, I'd love to. I mean, originally we were going to do this. <laughs> Blast for me. And I was going to get to try your, your beer, but. Um, oh, of course, yes. The time will come. The time will come. I'll I'll get some to you for uh, for when you land, so you can. So what's, what was the what was the impetus for you to start the beer? Well, um, part boredom, part I wanted to do something I I was passionate about, mm -hmm. and just due to circumstantial changes, I wanted to step away from um, working in the financial industry. So just wasn't enjoying it it was becoming more convoluted and i just wasn't really able to get my teeth into it so i wanted to do mm. something that i could kind of sit alongside that mm. but then i've kind of sort of leapfrogged over it now so it's still kind of like a, a growing side gig kind of thing um but with um i'm, I'm doing i'm trying to channel my inner james kennedy and i'm doing more sort of videography stuff now based on the marketing that i did for the brewery so yeah. um it's sort of it's all been a bit wishy-washy but has now kind of I f sort of found my way with what I'm doing so I'm still brewing we've got um we yeah, brought out a new beer recently we've got another one that's due to come out ASAP we've got spirits that are coming out but it's still kind of never going to be my full time I don't think but yeah you know, I'm still pushing it it's still still good still good that's it's cool man fun. I mean just to see it grow and then get it in the airport and things like that like it's, yeah man it's nice just to see your friends trying different stuff and you know doing 180s and things and, and seeing it yeah. pay off because there's a lot of fear certainly with um yeah taking a risk like that but it's I think mm. they're always calculated risks especially with you like your intelligent lad and I think yeah uh, yeah it's nice to see it I can't wait to try it <laughs> oh, I appreciate that man thank you I think we start to see a few more people kind of be a bit braver with with career choices I think post pandemic aren't we are some people who've had that idea for a long time or always wanted to do x y and z perhaps they got made redundant after a furlough period they're thinking well you know if now now or never kind of thing yeah, I think the pandemic was great for letting people actually have the time to try stuff. And, yeah. uh, and then also realizing how much they actually need, you know, the mm -hmm. people are going out and doing this things like, well, do I really need to have this yeah. job to pay for a lifestyle that I actually don't enjoy anymore? Yeah. Um, and it was so good just to see what people were doing. Yeah, it was, it was kind of inspiring. And I kind of felt a bit lazy most days just seeing <laughs> what people were doing. I mean, yeah. certainly with my industry, like I, I couldn't do a lot when, you know, we'd, we'd sort of do the sneaky music video here, here and there. Yeah. Um, 
But There's ways around that, isn't there? I guess in in some capacity. But if a lot of your your clients and customers aren't open, then they're not going to be able to be pushing on for the people want to see shots of people in masks. Like if you had to go out and film yeah. like the streets and things like that, and everyone was wearing yeah. masks, you're kind of time stamping everything. So they would so yeah. so aware of that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it just it just wasn't possible to go out and do it. So it, it was kind of boring. I mean, I used the time to write, which was great, yeah. and we, you know we were developing ideas so that as soon as the world reopened, we could rather than going right, what we're going to do it was like we know yeah. what we have to do. Um, yeah. And I think that's yeah, proactive. It was the best way to do it, and that was what I mean. The pandemic obviously there was a load of problems with it, but mm -hmm. um, the, it was just nice to be able to stop and think about. Yeah. Right, which direction do we actually need to be going in? What yeah. is important and things like that. So yeah, that was coming out of that. You know, it was nice to have things ready to go. Yeah, that sounds like a, a very sensible and productive way of, of of planning things. You know, I think worse than a static start is if you've already got a bit of momentum and you kind of know what you want to sink your teeth into. You've probably perhaps got rid of some and shelved some ideas that actually. I've had some time to sit on this. It's not what I'm into. I've, I'm going to go in this direction. So perhaps gave you a bit of time to really find what your next project or passion project as well because i know obviously you, you you said you're writing so you know uh, being able to focus on on what you wanted to do i suppose was was ideal yeah definitely um sort of cutting out the noise it's like when you go on holiday or something like that yeah. you get like two weeks away from you know paying bills washing you know doing the dishes <laughs> that kind of stuff yeah. and the perspective that you get from that yeah I've always found like just just like being here like you know yeah i'm back like there's loads of things i just want to jump into but um yeah 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 nice to have some perspective definitely definitely is this giving you uh now you're over there as well perhaps a bit more of an appetite to do get involved with some more overseas projects and and sort of start to spread out a bit more maybe i mean it all depends especially what i do is you, you sort of a gun for hire so it depends who, yeah. who's giving you the job yeah uh, um the project that I'm working on at the minute, there's, there's definitely sort of room to grow within that project yeah. um, cool. in other areas. Um, it's a, you know, it's a really good opportunity. So, you know, it's something that I'm taking equity in and things like that. Yeah. So I can sort of be part of this, this whole new thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, it's all about what you've done. Sort of the film industry is very much, if you've done it, we, you can do it again if you've never done it we might not give you the opportunity to try it you know the, the very much yeah. the lane system that is yeah. hard to break out of and i've yeah. always been very conscious of that and i've always tried to at least never do the same thing twice or if i do make sure yeah. it's, it's better or, or you know but if you um sort of at the start of my career you, you like i was getting a lot of oh do you want to come and do behind the scenes stuff for this commercial for this music video and eventually you'd just be the behind the scenes guy and with, yeah. you, with yourself what you're doing you know it's i think it's important for you to go well where do i actually want to go with this like do i just yeah. want to do this type of filming or this type of editing or this that and, and just be careful not to end up stuck in a lane that you kind yeah. of you know we are the da -da -da guys um, yeah because it's not a very fun place to be in and it's a creative industry and if you're just stuck doing the same stuff <laughs> well, eventually it's not a creative industry it's just <laughs> no. yeah and I've always been trying to be very careful of that. So I've, I mean, the in terms of what I've got coming up next, I've got a, another short film that we shot in October. Um, right. And we're just in post-production on that now. So we're just waiting for final sound mix and visual effects. And then we can submit that to festivals. Um, hopefully Amazing. in the next couple of weeks, we can get that, you know, out and things like that. Um, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. I mean, the... I don't. I mean, is that something you'd be interested in doing short films? Are you interested in fiction, yeah. you know, narrative, or is it? Are you quite happy just you know you want to do documentaries? Because I've seen that you're doing Hockey Town and things like that. Yeah, so that that's been something I've wanted to do for um, for a really long time, but just it was always just an idea. Like oh, I'd love to do that, but never felt capable. Well, not not that I didn't feel capable as such, but just thought that's way out of my lane. Like what 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 am I thinking? It's not something I uh, I do. But then gradually I've kind of gone full circle and. and found my feet back into you know a, a media and, and film um space because that's what i studied but you know when i was when i was studying um i did you know both both media and film um and it's not that i've had these these visions of myself being a hotshot director um but it's not something that i would ever you know stay completely clear of if if the opportunity came um and i felt that my skill set had gravitated that way and i was 
feeling confident about it than um, than yeah p- potentially but i think there's there's uh, with with documentary filmmaking as well um it's important to have that that narrative through it as well so you know perhaps it'll be um it'll, it'll help me to find my feet and look at my storytelling first so then maybe you know it could be something that that might um might tickle my fancy uh further further down the road but i'm trying to get too far ahead of myself um and obviously a lot of the commercial shoots that we're doing now you know they're taking up most of my time which is you know whilst it is creative you are still dictated to in terms of you know the the the, the type of business that has approached you it's it needs to be relevant to them so it kind of you know it, it's it's a bit more well, it's not restricted is it but it's it's you still get to be creative but I, that's the kind of field where i know i'm gonna grow my camera skills um my you know my, my whole project overview will 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 evolve so i think as i become more confident as a filmmaker then potentially yeah it might be might be able to do a little uh, final collaboration or a re uh, resurfacing of horny single male which everyone wants <laughs> yeah for anybody that doesn't know what horny do you care to comment is. uh, it was a web sitcom that i made years ago and uh that was i mean going you know talking about what you're just saying there like it's it's baby steps and things like that like that was Mm -hmm. my that was me trying to learn how to write basically yeah try to write in a format that i'd never written before um so you know and that was it was like it was like a forced learning curve for myself yeah like learning on the sort of learning on the job is something i've always tried to do yeah um, it's important. not gonna fake it till you make it kind of way but certainly yeah you know you need to do like you need to try it otherwise you never yeah. gonna do it um exactly so. yeah it's tra- trial and error and i guess um there's if, if you think right i've got i've, I've you know i'm fine now that's, that's everything i need to learn i'll just keep doing the same thing it goes back to what you said about not being creative anymore but actually if you're constantly open to learning and trying to always better yourself in each job and that's that's surely only a good thing as a as a filmmaker yeah i mean when i put down any experience and things like that the, certainly the first probably like seven or eight years of my career was making bad stuff and mm-hmm. stuff that but at the time i thought it was good stuff you know yeah. and it's only sort of through hindsight and looking back that you kind of go right okay i can see what i was trying to do and i definitely wasn't hitting it but then <laughs> if you look at my latest stuff i go well all right I'm, f- I'm still figuring out those things from the past that i got wrong yeah um and it's been really interesting to sort of chart that trajectory a little bit and sort of go back and watch things like like the very first things that i made and go right i was yeah. completely uh, misinterpreting <laughs> what i was supposed to be doing on yeah. the set and you know the amount of stuff that i was doing i was always very much a one-man band yeah. And that was through necessity because we couldn't afford to pay anybody. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, and it allowed me to sort of learn every facet of a crew, every every crew member's job. I've done it, you know. Right. And, that was, <laughs> and, that's, and now, but that, now that's really important because I've met other directors, I've worked with other directors where they don't know how something plugs in, they don't know how this, they don't know how to talk to the sound guy. And I think when I step onto a set and the crew get to meet me and work with me, then they always sort of come away sort of kind of happier because it feels like they're okay. being respected and their industry is being respected. Yeah. Um, and I've always liked to make it inclusive. And that, I think that's a great mm. way of doing it is just do everything, you know, yeah, do everything yourself. I'm sure there's an element of that in what you're doing now. You're the, you're the sound guy and the camera guy and the editor and, yeah. the, producer and the director all yeah. at the same time. And um, yeah, it's just keeping all that in your head is a great, yeah. um, it's a great learning experience and yeah it yeah. sets you up for so much stuff in the future that you don't even know about um, oh definitely you become a bit of a swiss army knife of of film and, and how do you tell someone what you want from them if you don't know how to best articulate that because you don't fully understand what they do they're just the guy that makes the sound nice like well there's more to it than that and, and i need more from you to be able to do that and i guess yeah if you've i suppose there's, there's, there's other industries like that isn't there? if you if you want to be a chef you probably start off by washing pots helping out maybe a bit front of house or whatever it might be and eventually you start to appreciate the stresses of the kitchen and, and then you go on to become you know climb your way up that ladder and, and i guess that's the, no different in in filming is it you've got to experience it and find find what you like doing as well and, and what you hate because then you can you can you know you know that you need to get someone in who knows what they're doing because you're not going to touch it the film industry definitely has a tendency to be a little bit of um i don't want to show that i don't know what i'm doing because then right people might sort of see behind the curtain a little bit mm-hmm Whereas I think it's important to ask questions and at least collaborate with, like you say, the sound guy. If you you know if you don't know how to do it, go and talk to him in the corner and say, "Well, how should we do this? It's yeah. going to impact the shot." 
things like that. I've right. um, certainly there's a. I mean, I had this when we when we were doing the shoot in LA the other week. I, you know, I always have this thing where I feel like the least qualified person on set, <laughs> and I always feel like I'm wasting everybody's time. The whole shoot would carry on regardless if I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and I have to sort of remind myself constantly that no, this you're everyone's here because of you. Um, yeah. You can you do know what you're doing. If yeah. you don't know what you're doing, it's okay to ask. Yeah. Um, because there's someone there that does that, and I constantly yeah. have to keep sort of having that little battle with myself of. You know, uh, I mean, certainly from where I've come from, mm. um, like my parents, none of my, you know, there's no one in my family that's, that is in my industry. So there was no one ever yeah. that sort of I could ask the question of, um, yeah. like, it was very, very much like self-made, like, I'm going to try and do this and hopefully it's the right direction. Yeah. So there's always that little bit of small town boy in me that's when yeah. I get to set that I'm like, that I'm an <laughs> imposter. I shouldn't be here. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, and so there's normal, normal, there, was a, there was a conversation with myself in a quiet corner last week. So, and certainly <sighs> going, James, you're messing this up and all that. And then going, hang on, these guys have called you. Like you must be at least yeah. know something to be here. So yeah. if you, figure, if you can't figure something out, go and ask somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I asked where the toilet was and then they told me. Well, there you go. And if you hadn't have asked. I would have yeah. wet myself. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's a hell of an icebreaker. So, <laughs> so I mean, the, uh, the web shorts you, you touched on and that's helped you like, you know, make those mistakes. I, I think if you, if you were to go back and speak to, you know, young impressionable James Kennedy, who was finding his feet, uh, you know, his, his goal would be to get to where you are now, but now you are where you are now, you know, your goals evolve and change and, and evolve, you know, as, as you do. So I think, um, you know, the fact that you've kind of had to go through all that, I think just makes absolute sense, doesn't it? And um, the web series I thought were, were great, um, but obviously not knowing as much about the industry then um, as, a, as I perhaps do now. But um, would you ever, obviously you've looked back and you've, you've picked them apart. Would you ever re revisit a project and sort of re, not rehash it is the wrong, sounds like the wrong word, but like re reimagine it, I guess, bring it to life with what you know now? Uh, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the first projects I did was a was a feature zombie movie, like self funded features feature film that I made called Dead City, which it was a project that was I was completely not ready for. Um, but when you, I think I was like eighteen, nineteen, yeah. when I started making maybe but about nineteen. When I started, I was too stupid and ignorant <laughs> to to say, "Well, hang on, like <laughs> maybe let's not spend two years of your life sort of going in this direction because." You're not going to learn that much making yeah. one project. You know, why don't you just make loads of little different things and just make sure you can do it first before wasting everybody's time? <laughs> I mean, that that whole project from the start just had loads of problems. You know, we had like crew members die and uh, cast members like died sort of quite early on into production, and the whole yeah. thing just kind of shifted. And it taught me so much about um, stamina and uh, and, yeah. and sort of. You know, being able to uh, figure out problems like problem yeah. solving quite quickly. Um, so with the, the the first with that movie, we, you know, we we shot for three weeks, and it was supposed to be a scary zombie movie set in a cinema because we we shot in the old Regal, which was a cinema in Northwich that um, is gone now. But um, I used to work there when I was a kid. You know, it was where I got my film education. And <laughs> when they said it was closing, I went over and asked and said, "Can I film in your?" cinema like so the day after you close before he gets knocked down am i allowed to yeah. shoot us on the movie and they were so nice and he said yeah go for it so they basically gave us the keys to this huge <laughs> cinema like this is how you turn the lights on this is where everything is you know um just don't set it on fire um <laughs> like, oh god so we were just like all right cool this is amazing let's do it never for a second thought we're going to need insurance what if somebody falls and hurts himself you need <laughs> there's so many things that could have gone wrong yeah so we shot but for three I... weeks and we were getting awful stuff literally <laughs> terrible stuff unwatchable stuff um, but at the time I'm going this is amazing uh yeah. You know, we were shooting a movie and it was all my friends and, and you know, and we'd, we'd auditioned and we'd been able to buy costumes and we, you know, we had lights and the lights were just security lights. My dad was an electrician down the salt mines and um, <laughs> they were just the security lights, you know, the yellow lights yeah. on like yellow stand. And yeah. That was, that was the, and, you know, we'd, and my dad had built some frames. Problem solving though. There you go. With like, um, 
you know, like diffusion paper on it. And that was it. We just, you know, put it through the diffusion. And that was, we had two lights. We didn't have any idea about like key light or, you know, eye light, or <laughs> like any of the yeah. tricks. I hadn't bothered to learn how to light. <laughs> I just kind of went, it looks okay. Yeah. And shadows everywhere. And <laughs> yeah, we shot for three weeks and it was loads of fun. Um, but I, also we were going horribly behind schedule. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the set is about to be demolished. <laughs> like we need to hurry. <laughs> Literally, we, we, the diggers were rolling up. And, we're like, oh my. <laughs> and then and like three weeks into filming, one of the actors, he died horribly in a, a car accident. It was super sad. And yeah. literally we were like, oh, what the hell? Like, what are we going to do? Because he was a friend yeah. as well. And his girlfriend yeah. was in the cast. And yeah. everyone was sort of st st like stupidly cr connected to each other. And yeah. And it was just one of these things where we told everybody in the town that we were going to do it and everyone wanted to turn up and be a zombie. And in like yeah. two weeks we had, I think it was the week after we had like 50, 60 zombies, you included turning up just to walk <laughs> around a cinema. Uh, and we were like, God, we, well, all these people are coming. We don't want to let them down, but we don't even know if we can finish this bloody film. So in the end, I, I was chatting to the girlfriend of the, guy who passed away and she said you know what you should finish this like you know he was super interested in being involved and like obviously we can't use any of that footage now but finish it and yeah and that's always sort of stuck with me like just finish it it doesn't have to mm -hmm. be made just just get it finished that's that's the biggest job yeah and so all these zombies turned up and we're like we don't even know <laughs> what the story is so like we can't finish the script that we had like this it's impossible and all the footage that we've shot is unusable because yeah unfortunately Stuart was in every shot so we're like right so you guys all turned up and we was like let's just shoot a bunch of zombie stuff like just random like zombies yeah. walking down the between the seats <laughs> and then a zombie baby and again we hadn't even planned we had one makeup artist for 50 zombies <laughs> 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 so people were coming in going i'm ready like just give us two hours. <laughs> yeah. Where, we like, where are the extras? Here's, here's one now. <laughs> here's one now. We were yeah. like, okay, let's do yeah. one thing with him. All right, we got two now. Bring it. All right, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. and, and we just shot a bunch of zombie stuff. And then we went away for two weeks and just basically rewrote the whole movie as a comedy yeah. because like, I don't want to do anything too serious, yeah. too dark. We've, we lose the cinema in, I think we had three days from right. actually figuring out what the script was going to be to actually the cinema being torn down so we yeah. had three days so we were shooting nights basically we were shooting so i was working at school at the time um and i'd do my day job from sort of eight until five and i'd drive an hour home because it was it was far away go straight to the cinema eat my tea there like a fish and chips from the seafarer <laughs> and then and then everyone would turn up and we'd shoot until four or five in the morning Sheesh. just because we we're running out of time yeah and then we're back to work the next day home, hour sleep back to work oh we did that for three days and then you probably look like a zombie by the end of it i would have thought <laughs> it was just when i think now like how i didn't die and <laughs> and then yeah we just did that like for i think it took two like a year to make it and then obviously a year to edit it and then we put it we did like a premiere i was like this is amazing like a premiere we all got suit and tie and you know we're having drinks and we bought all the booze for everybody and everyone's having a good time and then they watch the movie and it becomes less of a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I got chatting to somebody the other day about the film. He was like, oh yeah, you made us watch that terrible movie that you made. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the it's, it's a it's, it's, dark cinema and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the equivalent of saying, hey, come and watch my band. It just lasts longer. So, you know, I think. <laughs> it's a two hour gig for a band that you, that no, where nobody knows how to play their instruments. <laughs> I've been in a band like that. It's fine. It? Going back to the original question, like if I was going to go back and remake something, it, it'd probably mm. be that because yeah. there was a lot. There was a lot of mm. a lot of stuff that went into that, and yeah, and um, and yeah, and it didn't and it didn't pay off. But like, uh, I've got a load of good memories of that, and yeah. lots of uh, interesting behind the scenes footage that I just like yeah. to watch every now and then. But but again, it was it was one of those where um, I learned a lot on it, you know. Yeah, and and. Um, yeah and i don't regret any of that so when you say like do you want to go back and make something sometimes i think that but then at the same yeah. time i just think i'd probably be running myself over i think uh yeah to reinvent the wheel and i just don't think it's yeah i think sometimes it's best just to keep going and certainly like this, the stuff that we were shooting then it, it, it's not a good film <laughs>
not a good film. I think maybe I just, in, I've got different recollections. I think I just enjoyed it partly because there was a half a second shot of me falling over a cinema chair and I was like, oh, come in a film. But also like I was, I was proud of you and I, I got kind of caught up in that, the whole, you know, being in the abandoned cinema, having a movie premiere, like, like it was fun. fun. And, and I, I think, think even if you you have to learn lessons along the way, well, if those lessons are, were fun at the time, then there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. But I, th I, th I think that perhaps some up and coming sort of like, or the next generation of filmmakers, I think probably won't have as many of these lessons because equipment's better now. There's so much stuff on the internet where you can start to like you know, learn online courses to like on specific elements of filmmaking. Whereas you had to use what was available on a budget with time constraints and, and learn those hard lessons. So, I mean, what do you think you'd be doing if you were 18? Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll ask this question, question with, a, with a pinch of salt. Yeah. yeah. What, what would you be doing as a filmmaker if you were starting now? Just TikTok. That's all yeah. I'd be doing. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much, just that project I've just done. Yeah. You know, it, it had loads of investors, you know, it was invested by all kinds of people that, like people that you've heard of and yeah. like companies that you've heard of and things like that. And then a bunch of TikTokers, just these guys <laughs> that were like 18, 19, made so much money on TikTok and just needed somewhere to put the money because they felt like TikTok, you know, it's got a long, yeah. it's got a, you know, lifespan. Yeah. So they invested into this project and like, it's just crazy. I mean, I mean, I think TikTok is, and things like that are, it's good for getting people, you know, camera ready and, you know, yeah. and trying things out and just being creative. Mm -hmm filmmakers i don't know i mean there's certainly when i started it, it i think i would i probably would because i was like right okay if i make a film i can get it in the cinema um i can do it that way whereas now it's less about that and now it's more about you know youtube and there's yeah. so many yeah. great channels on youtube that support filmmakers yeah and basically you know they're, they're monetizing their own channel using other people's content that's yeah that's basically they you know they're not making their own content they're basically just taking other people's content and yeah um good examples control z which is the short film that i made that you know once it had finished its festival run mm -hmm. you know once it's been to all the festivals well then they just live online and normally yeah. you just put on your youtube channel and you know you get 500 hits and and that'd be it people would find it slowly in one day you might get a message yeah. saying oh, i really like your film mate whereas with control z um there's a channel called um uh, dust which is like a science fiction um, YouTube channel that I think yeah. Sky might have. I think Sky might own it. Oh, okay. Or, or part, part on it. Um, and they got in touch and said, you know, we really love Control Z. I don't know how they found it, whether they'd seen it at festivals or whatever. Yeah. They said, well, can we license it? And I think they paid like $700. And then it just lives on dust and it gets, you know, racks up like a million views and things like that. And that's, that's their channel. So that's a really good thing to exist now because yeah, basically it gives it a whole new audience and probably a bigger audience than film festivals. You know, it used to be that the film yeah. festivals are where you get your film scene. Whereas now it's like, well, you can hit a million people in their homes straight yeah. away. Um, and that's where a lot of them, it feels like they go to die, but I feel like it doesn't, it feels, you know, YouTube is yeah. like, oh, my short would go there to die now. Whereas now it's like, no, well, no, now it's going to find a new audience. And yeah, I think that's, that's been pretty amazing to see. So yeah, I think, that's yeah, if cool. I was a filmmaker starting off now, I'd, predominantly be making probably shortest things yeah um and and certainly that's something that i'm doing now um i released a i wrote and shot a short comedy thing called the spectrum um like a few months ago i did it in like we shot it in an evening on like two hours right um, and then edited it the next day in about half a day and then just put it on yeah. that was it and right you know i want to do more of those because it gets me writing yeah and it gets me writing fast and gets it out quick. And it's a very yeah. small turnaround. Whereas, whereas it's a short film. So Maggie, which is a horror film that I made in October last year. That's, we're yeah. We've done it now. We worked on that script for over a year. Yeah. And then we, and then we had to raise the money. You know, it yeah. cost, I think it ended up costing like 12, 13,000 pounds to make the short. Yeah. Um, and then we're still in post-production now. And it's what, yeah. June? Nearly the end of June. And then it'll go to film festivals yeah. and it probably won't start the film festival run until October this year. So it'll have been yeah. probably two, three years from actual inception right. for it to come out. You might have missed the mark. Yeah. And so 
for me, it was always like, we started starting out and we're going, right, I need to make a short film or I need to make a feature. And they just take too long. And yeah. you don't learn that many lessons in one project, you know? Right. So yeah. I want to make lots of little ones and just keep yeah. feeding them out and just build a bit, curate a bit of an online presence. Yeah. Um, well, that goes back to what you were saying before about that business card, that, 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 I guess a, a, a much more higher polished showreel, isn't it? But you've got the full the full thing. So mm-hmm. if someone says, "I've got this project in mind," it's something you'd be interested in, you'd be like, "Well, yeah, I've actually done a short sure. based mm-hmm. on something like this. Take a look, see what you think. Is this kind of what you're talking about?" Or, and they could be like, mm-hmm. "Yes, no," or "It is," but we've kind of want to put this in it. Oh, I've got something like that, and you can kind of you've got all these different um, creative pieces of work that you've that you've been yeah, able to, as you said, produce really quickly and get out there and may even be a case of you know that there's someone who's going to a job that's going to be coming up that you're quite interested in so you're going to go and do a short for that to to be able to present to them so that that strikes me as something that that is a lot more feasible than than shooting feature films yeah if you want to do something that's like specific and there's a gap in your knowledge then we'll just go and try it out and 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 the music videos have been very good for me for that um, right that's that's always what i've used music videos for is almost like a test testing ground for yeah you know, ideas and, and things like that that I want to take into either short films or scripts mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, it's always I've always tried to sort of weave narrative aspects into music videos. Right. Um so yeah, I mean, like you say, if you want to, you know, you want to do more fictional narrative stuff in the future and you know yeah. it's not something that you've tried yet, well yeah, get a few music videos under your belt and yeah. And, that's and, a, and that's a great shot. Yeah, we've had a, a few musicians approach us with with ideas and it's always been a case of I love film. I've got this particular set of skills, um, but I'm from a music background. I've been in music videos and kind of been in and around that. And, I, I, you know, I, so I, yeah, I think I'd like to get involved with it. And I think, yeah, doing some projects like that um, would be, would be really cool. And I'm, I'm sort of trying to, I'm looking at delving in as well with, um, with some of the contacts that have, have built up, looking at some kind of wedding production sort of stuff as well. Cause I think, Particularly when you're starting out as a filmmaker, if you've if you know you can produce something that's to a high standard, that you know you're not going to get a bride shoving flowers down your throat when you uh, when you hand it over. You know if it's good and you're happy with it, <laughs> then it allows you that's going to that's going to pay your bills, pay your mortgage, um, and then allow you to then look at other more creative projects. Um, so, aside, yeah, that, yeah. I guess music videos is probably the same sort of. I'm not saying wedding videos, music videos are the same sort of thing. What I'm saying is, yeah, yeah music videos is the same kind of thing of building up that that skill set, isn't it? It is, but I mean, with music videos, you're never going to be able to pay the bills on music videos unless no. you're very lucky. I mean, I think, I mean, I've been sort of shooting music videos now probably for 18 years. Yeah. And it's probably only in the last year or two that I've started to take actual money from music videos. But yeah. You know, for myself, like to pay for my time and, and things like that. When I started out, it was, um, so I didn't, I went to university to, to study film and found after the first year, like I just wasn't learning fast enough right too broad i was you know we'd do one day on lighting and then the next day we'd be making a website on flash i was like well <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna need that i mean yeah I mean, now i kind of wish i'd be able to make a website but um <laughs> it was one of those where I was like, i'm not learning fast enough i'm not going in the right direction um so i left university and, and basically made my own film school um for oh. myself out of the job like just doing yeah. it just just getting in touch with bands like your band when you yeah. thought expo just saying i'll make you a music video just, just going to gigs and saying do you want a music video and doing them and like the budget's for like 250 quid yeah but i was like 19 like at the time i was like that's loads of money i could do loads of that like i've got a camera i've got my security lights um, <laughs> let's just find like a location and just and shoot them and you know they were awful but like I was a working filmmaker, you know, yeah, I was getting paid. professional, yeah, professional. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. taking any money and sometimes it even cost me money. I'd be like, oh, I want to do this. I'll go and buy it. And then, you know, and I realized that that's how the budget, oh, well, I'll <laughs> through your budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was me figuring out the way I could do it. And then, you know, I did sort of a few of those budget started getting bigger and by bigger, I mean like an extra 50 quid here and there. Yeah. Still not taking any money from it. And then I thought, you know what? I need to, get a little bit of credibility like i need to be be seen as like an expert in this field yeah be taken more seriously so i started emailing bands um that i'd liked sort of as a teenager that perhaps weren't like as big as they used to be but they were still kind of relevant and things like that yeah. and like less than jake and real big fish and uh uh 
and other people like Frank Turner and things like that and just just message just straight up email them and saying you've got a gig coming up in Manchester can I come with like a few cameras and we film it and you can have the footage and we basically cut it like a live show and they would always say yeah because it's free content and this was yeah. sort of before Instagram this was before um probably uh youtube is around but it, you certainly yeah. didn't have like not in the same capacity i guess so youtube has capacity. completely yeah. changed isn't it exactly yeah i mean we were talking like when we did the frank turner one it was more about oh how can we release this on dvd like that's yeah. th that was sort of what it was then <laughs> yeah for our younger listeners uh, that's a digital <laughs> versatile disc of which, <laughs> which <laughs> um <laughs> And it was that, but then I, I, I mean, as much as I wanted to actually do that, I knew that it would make a few more waves and people go, Oh, these guys have worked with Frank Turner. These guys have worked with less than Jake and really oh, that's Yeah. You've got that name to your name now, haven't you? Exactly. And then as soon as, and as soon as we shot the less than Jake one, bands were like falling over themselves. Like, can we, can we work with you? And I, and I could kind of start naming my price a little bit. Now it was still yeah. super low. It was still like seven, eight yeah. quid. And it was just like getting those budgets to creep up and creep up. Yeah. And and that was just the best way of starting for me. And and certainly those bands stuck with us and helped us out. And like the Lesson Jake one, they actually released it as a music video in the end. Um and it's incredible. You know, it on it. And it was just like such an amazing experience. Uh, but like no, you know, there was the only reason I did that was to be taken seriously. Like, yeah, to, of course. Stand on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. But it's it's win-win because you get to build up your experience. You get an amazing um, band or, or or project on your you know to your name. As you said, the band gets some free content, and if they don't like it, they don't have to use it. It's not cost them out. No bother. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and I love doing music videos. They're so much fun. And like bands are always, I mean, not they're always difficult to work with, but it's always varied. <laughs> and yeah. You know, it's, I do a lot of corporate stuff as well, do commercials and things like that. And it's just a very different energy on those things. And music mm -hmm. videos, it, it's similar to what I started out doing, like in terms of yeah. like guerrilla filmmaking, just give me the camera. I'm just going to go and get the shot. <laughs> no permits. Let's just get it before, yeah. you know, before the cops turn up. Yeah. I, love that. And I think that's still, I still want to keep that because, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of directors I've seen can, you know, they can get quite comfortable in the commercial world. It's you can make as much money in a day on a commercial as you could do in 15 music videos in a year. And it's, and yeah. I think a lot of people go away from that, but I still want to learn how to do certain things. So music yeah. videos are perfect examples for that. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it served me well, like the experiences that I've had certainly over the last five years with certain bands, um, I would have never been able to have had those experiences without that mu music level, that music industry, um, uh, just, you know, m meet in the middle, film and music. You know, because yeah. I mean, I'm like you, like, I, you know, I was in bands, you know, playing, you know, for years and things like that. And that really helps with, you know, like, like I say, music video, you kind of understand the talk and the way to speak to artists and things like that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's still a film shoot, time. isn't it? It's, it's still got that. Um, it's still, you know, start to finish. You've got to, you've got to plan it in the same way. You've got to think of if it is, a, like you said, your appetite for music videos often there is that narrative which which lends well to when you then go on to produce short films and, and any other projects so it's all it's, that's all good as far as, as far as i'm concerned yeah yeah definitely um i think uh as long if you know what your next step is then yeah. find the way of you know if you want to get to the next level i wanted to get into commercials for the longest time i yeah. just couldn't find a way in because i've never done any commercials yeah um and it was sort of around the time that I'd made a short film after I'd made Dead City. I was like, I need to do yeah. something a bit more self-contained. So I made a short film called The Lonely Hearts Club, which I thought was going to be the best thing ever. And then when I got it in the edit, I was like, this is like, I've made a lot of the same mistakes that I made on Dead City. Oh, okay. Um, just in HD. <laughs> it's just in HD. And like, yeah, we had, we had better, you know, I wasn't the only crew member. Um, I was like, I really need to go away and figure out how to actually make films and tell stories and, and do all this stuff. Um, and at this time I was still working at schools and, you know, still yeah. every day, like sort of helping kids make films about like the kind of pop that they designed in arts class and all this stuff. <laughs> like, I need to, like, I'm not going to learn anything here. Yeah. So <laughs> a job came up at, um, a bathroom company. They wanted like an in-house videographer. And I was like, well, I'm going to be making loads of mini commercials every day about mm -hmm. toilets. And I was like, you know what, let's do that. And so we went and so I think it was four years I was filming <laughs> toilets. 
<laughs> just hear them flushing in your sleep <laughs> you can make a toilet look good you can make anybody look good it was the way i saw it and they were like a small company that was just starting but getting like massive investments so yeah. I was like, well they're gonna it's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and then i could try and find my way into shooting their commercials when they get to the point of like advertising yeah. television so it was calculated to do that and i think it took about two years before they started considering tv commercials so i was in a perfect position to go well i can do this yeah and that's what happened. We shot mm-hmm. their first commercials. They only know, yeah. trust you. They know what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. But even then, like the first commercials that I made for them aren't great. But by the time like we shot, like I left the company, I'd, and I'd done like five or six commercials with them. Like I knew how to shoot commercials now, and I could and I could prove that I could do it. And like I was saying with our industry, like if you've not done it, it's very hard to go and find it and get the job. Yeah. But I kind of trusted like, with it. Way into doing it. Yeah. Somehow. Um, and find ways around it um and so yeah and then you know and that that was i think that was the most important thing for me was shooting toilets <laughs> toilet, call it my toilet film school you know and that was the most important thing for me. Like, i like that because we just we just filming all day every day and making yeah. like and learn and go well, why doesn't that work you know like like the first like the first sort of three months i couldn't like you have to shoot like chrome on the showers and i was like i can't no matter where i put the lights it always <laughs> looks bad and then I hired this guy who's like he's a he's an amazing cinematographer now, and he you know he does all my stuff, but he goes off and does all these amazing films. He's just done a feature in Romania, um, with uh, <laughs> it was a Christmas movie. Um, of course, he was like, "Well, you just like what the Chrome's seeing." I was like, "Because I was trying to light the Chrome, I was trying to put <laughs> yeah. lights on it. I was like, why is it not showing, <laughs> making the Chrome look sparkling?" He's like, well, "If you light the wall, it'll make the Chrome look." Sh-. I was like, <laughs> i can laugh now like i'm like well obviously but i yeah <laughs> so toilet, toilet film school you know, yeah that's, that's, that's got to be the name of your book <laughs> toilet film be, school yeah. by james kennedy yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely definitely but that that led on to other stuff as well didn't because you then went on to do um was it hilton i think you worked with and a few others you had some other projects so you had all that show real i guess that you you could you could talk through yeah. or share yeah yeah we did got to work with dreamworks and disney on uh some things off the back of that and again it was because i'd yeah. done these kind of things and little commercials here and there but again that was so when dreamworks approached us about doing something for him it was a movie called boss baby um, yeah uh, which is a very weird film if you've never seen it. It's, it's uh, I'm familiar with it, but I haven't seen it. But I'm sure I will. Drinks, check it out. It's <laughs> kind, of, kind of bad and kind of good at the same time. Yeah. I mean, there's a sequel now, I believe. So, <laughs> even shows and everything. Yeah, they approached. <laughs> they just wanted some marketing materials because they were doing a, a Hilton wanted collaboration because um, families weren't staying at the Hilton hotels. Right. right. Everyone just thought it was for business people. Yeah. So they were doing this. Uh, they came to us because they were doing a like a, a tie-in with boss baby to say like kids can stay and eat for free They're trying to get more families yeah there. so all they basically wanted was a powerpoint slideshow of like the character come and stay here on all this stuff and i was like that's like we can go further with this because if i go further with this it's gonna look better for my reel because we're working exactly with i can't really use a slideshow <laughs> so i approached i approached dreamworks which is kind of stupid probably and said can you give us the character assets without any backgrounds and we'll go and shoot a load of plates at the hilton hotel and put your characters into the Hilton. And they went, all right. <laughs> You're like, oh, we know how oh. to do it. You gave us all these, <laughs> you gave us all these 3D assets yeah. without like the data, like without any of the sort of the metadata or any 3D yeah. sort of data so that we could match the camera angles and the lighting yeah. and all this stuff. So we had to eyeball it. So there's a sh- shot where the baby walks across the room and the camera's doing this sort of, sort of crane move. <laughs> he throws all his money and all this stuff. <laughs> so I actually go, Right, I think it's like this. And basically yeah. did it for like three hours, just yeah. loads of different versions of it. And I went, <laughs> At what point were you like, out? Dad, it's like, do you need more lights? No, no, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Boss Baby? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I might need you to send me a lot of money because I'm about to get tired. <laughs> <laughs> Going to be in Disney jail. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it worked out. And, like, it worked out. And because of that, we got the job uh, with Disney for Incredibles 2. Yeah. Um, but then it, Disney were a very different beast. Like we turn up to Disney mm. and like, can we have the character assets? And they were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. 
we don't like our, <laughs> Disney don't like their characters Next outside session. of the world that they're supposed to be in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we weren't allowed to do any of that. So it was basically just like a slideshow <laughs> in the end. <laughs> so you just went absolutely backwards and did the thing you didn't want to do. Yeah. I, mean, I, I was like, I know how to do it. They're like, we know, we're just not letting you. <laughs> <laughs> Could I edit it in your studios? Even, even more now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's class I mean to go from uh, yeah blagging it in a abandoned cinema to filming toilets to working with Disney and DreamWorks and shooting even more exciting shorts and and, and, and some longer productions that's like that's a hell of a, a journey you've been through with it all and it's, yeah, it's incredible tip doth or tip is it tip, tip the cap doth the proverbial cap I don't know the cap is, is tipped to you yeah well done mate bloody, bloody, bloody proud, proud of you yeah. Very welcome. Now you do me. Um, okay. Well, uh, you got dressed today. That's incredible. Um, no, I mean this is from yesterday. I just I've not left here. So, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I like that you've got your laptop box on your shelf. Uh, I do. Just to let everyone know that you have technology. <laughs> <laughs> I have the technology. <laughs> it's just you know, I, I do I do play about with a bit of YouTube, so it's the set, isn't it? It's the oh oh this oh these are just my trinkets. Oh, <laughs> these are my graphic novels I've never read. <laughs> well, I mean, it looks like I'm in some kind of I don't know. I've got the wood beams. You I'm are right, in I'm Disney in a, jail. I'm in, I'm in a basement somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not the most exciting um, location for this, but um. <laughs> <laughs> it served its purpose. And you're looking dapper, no uh, no doubt. Um, Appreciate your time, Mr. Kennedy. Um, I, I understand that I am now the only thing standing between you and a brewery tour of Vancouver. So <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go and line your stomach with some Putin. 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 Yeah, don't line your stomach with, with Putin. It's going to take a bit of time for me to get my water. Yeah, yeah. Syrup, you know, all these Canadians. It's <sighs> a shot at the bar, don't they? It's still hockey season, isn't it? So I said that like I, like I, like I don't uh, know. No, it's Stanley Cup right now. But oh, of course it is. So she's, yeah. 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 And yeah. I think, I think they're in the middle or, or maybe it finished last night. I don't know, but they're all very excited. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should know because Vancouver are my adopted team, but I've completely fell off the wayside with hockey recently. So oh, really? It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, they've not been very good recently. We went to see them. Mm-hmm. I came to see them in November, I think it was, and they got absolutely battered. <laughs> and then yeah. we sat the manager the next day. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Awkward. Yeah. They, uh, they got to the Stanley Cup finals and lost, I think, as I was just getting into hockey. And I thought, well, I need a team to support. I liked How I Met Your Mother and Robin Shabotsky was uh, as an avid Canuck fan, so I'll, I'll pick the team, but I think I've cursed them. So um, don't. I think it's just a further reason for me not to be allowed into Canada. So. Mm. I'll, um, I'll let you enjoy those spoils uh, rather than rather than me. But uh, yeah, you'd love Vancouver, man. It's exactly your town. It's hockey and bear. Like I don't, yeah. I Tim Hortons. Imagine you living here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I would love to go to Canada and have a Tim Hortons, but they've literally just built one over there. Uh, so <laughs> maybe find a better reason to go just than Tim Hortons. But <laughs> is Tim Hortons. Nobody really likes Tim Hortons here. It's like a little chef. Like, I know. It's like, not great. Yeah, we're going to have to go abroad with our business because everyone thinks it sucks. Yeah. Well, enjoy your maybe not Tim Hortons then, but yeah. No. Give my love to uh, to your hosts and. Uh, Give the baby a little nuggy from me, and uh, I'll yeah look forward to speaking soon. Have a sick time. Yeah, man, take it easy. Good to see you. You too, you too mate. Bye. Bye. Oh, don't forget, if you want to see Liam and his guests, head over to the YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Well, thank God that's over.